Hey, what's up dudes? So today I figured why not make a video about my car since I figured all of you guys are going to be watching me do this uh, Hemi swap here and a whole bunch of series on there. A lot of you don't know the history on my car. A lot of you have never seen it or know anything about it. So I figured today would be a good day considering it's a nice cold rainyish day in Northern California and uh, man, I'll do the walk around, show you the whole car, talk to you about how I got it, where I found it, and uh, and the condition that it was in when I found it. So stick around. Here's the intro. Let's get into it. corner for dramatic effect and boom here you go so here is my 1970 dodge coronet 440 440 meaning the model number of the car not engine displacement so if you see another coronet whether it's a 67 66 you know 68 69 or whatever and it says 440 that is not talking about the engine displacement it is purely the model number or the trim level of the car like rt or 500 or super b that kind of thing so um Right off the bat, you can see that the whole bumper situation here is very unique and only specific to the 1970 uh, Coronet platform. And a lot of people back in the day didn't like it, so Dodge only sold half the numbers between uh, the Coronet and the Charger. The Charger also had that, you know, that big chrome uh, wraparound bumper as well. A lot of people didn't like that, so um, if you see a 70 B body, try to snatch it up because there's not a whole lot of them out there. All right, so let's start down the driver's side of the car here. And yes, I'm sure you guys have noticed I broke this off and it totally sucks too because that was the original one. And uh, it caught on my pocket one day somehow and it, and it just broke in half. And, but I, uh, I did find another one on eBay, so I'm going to put that on, but I'm not going to put it on until the whole Hemi swap is done because I'm sure working on this thing, I'm going to have to walk past it like a million times. And the last thing I want is just to break off the new one. So it's just going to sit right there until it's time to get put on so check this out this car is actually in a really good shape the body lines and the panels are like super straight yeah i mean it's a little it's a little wavy but it's it's, it's really not that bad like this car is in excellent condition for how long it's sat but um yeah door gaps are good now it was repainted i don't know when but i'm gonna go ahead and, and speculate that it was probably during the 80s at some point because I figured maybe the paint jobs from the factory started fading at that point, so people that had these cars just repainted them and, you know, sprayed over the original paint, which you can see right here. It is EW1, which is eggshell or just white in the Dodge, and I believe Plymouth called it Alpine White, but I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice color, and I actually don't mind the color that's on the car right now, but um, I don't have any plans of repainting it anytime soon. I kind of want to keep it just kind of ratty, beat up, and it just looks, it just looks really, really cool. It's not, it's definitely not as ratty as some other cars out there, but um, for me, it's it's good enough for who it's for. Let's make our way into the interior. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at the seats that are in here. So obviously these aren't the originals. These are my new Corbo A4 seats. Uh, the original seat situation in this car uh, was a bench seat, and I hate bench seats because they they actually tend to sit a little closer to the dash than buckets actually did, and it was just really uncomfortable. So I got rid of those. I ended up um, trading my bench seat for a pair of um, uh, bucket seats, which you'll see right here. And uh, he did a killer job on them, but they were way too nice for this thing, and they weren't really, they weren't really uh, what I wanted for this build anyway. So I sold them to a guy um, in the Midwest who's going to be using them for his 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B project, which, which is kind of cool. So 
Anyway, let's make our way to the dash. It's really nothing fancy. This is just your standard dash. Uh, Super B's and RT's and stuff, they got like the, the rally dash, which are really, really cool. And I was thinking about putting a rally dash in here, but I didn't know that the, uh, the frame situation is completely different from the standard dash to the, to the rally dash. So, um, I think I'm going to go with Dakota digital and they actually make a, a digital dash for the standard, um, gauge cluster. Uh, and a friend of mine, Daniel, he has been doing it. Um, he's got a guy, uh, working on his car and putting that in and it looks killer. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, carpet is actually in decent shape. I know it's completely filthy. Um, I, I took the back seat apart. Um, sorry, the, uh, the area back here, I've got the bench seat over there and I'm just doing some cleanup work. Let me just move this forward, doing some cleanup work. I want to get these, uh, B pillar panels, um, replaced uh, same thing with uh this one on that side as you can see it's just super weather warped i did um make myself a brand new um board back here i can't remember the name of it it's slipping my mind right now but um i'm sure you guys will let me know um but yeah so i made myself a new one out of plywood uh sanded it painted it and it's actually really thick and durable and um, if i want to put speakers back here i can certainly do that so i'm just going to go clean all this area up and I'm going to reseal here because when I get, when I go to drive across country to do power tour, I don't want these, I don't want them to leak or do whatever. So, <clears throat> so this being a post window car, right? All of the, uh, the structure is in this post and it makes these cars actually, uh, like a couple hundred pounds lighter than the hard tops. Um, the, uh, the back windows, don't roll down they pop out which is pretty rad so this whole fixture is one piece that you can unbolt and take out um pretty rad so like i said i'm just going back here and redoing everything and sealing it up because i don't want any leaks all right let me just show you the instrument panel real quick so you got your volts uh fuel speedometer uh temperature None of those have worked in this car. <laughs> well, this worked until it went out. And then that that's a whole other story itself. Killed the whole power in the car, and I had no idea what would happen until um, I was looking into it with a buddy of mine, and we actually saw that Chrysler ran all the power through the amp gauge. So if this ever burns out, kills all the power. But anyway, so we bypassed that. Here is the odometer. Now, it's going to be hard to believe, but no BS. That is the original mileage but I've since put thousands of miles on the car since then, so it is a little bit different. And there's my neighbors getting all... Do yeah, I'm filming YouTube. You're on YouTube now. Man, you guys look fancy. Well, you know, every once in a while. Ah, jeez. Anyway, <clears throat> back to this. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, um, it was actually 762 original miles when I got the car. And as hard to believe as that is, trust me, I, I didn't believe it either. But I did a lot of research on the car, and um, after everything I've I've looked into and talked to a couple previous owners, this car was just, it was literally, it was just never driven. Uh, I have the original paperwork from the uh, dealership, and it's got the, the guy's name who first bought it. So uh, it was in the Bay Area, I want to say Brentwood, something like that. Um, he either had the car for a while and didn't drive it, or he had it for a short while and drove it a little bit and then sold it. Um, and then it went to some other dude who had it in high school and who drove it around like barely anything, parked it because I happened to run into that dude's friend at a gas station one time who was talking to me about the car. And he was like, yeah, he had it for a while, but you know, he just never drove it and just kind of parked it and kept it in his dad's garage. And, um, and then they sold it to the guys I bought it from who let it sit in their yard for 15 plus years. After I'm done showing you the whole car, I'll show you all the pictures from what this thing used to look like. It's it's really bad and it was neglected and it's it, it, was, it was pretty sad, but I'm, I'm glad I was able to get it and save it and um, going through the car and giving it everything that it deserves. So, but yes, this car is a super original, very low mileage car. The people that just had it beforehand were just like weird tweakers and just did like a bunch of weird crap to it for some reason. But yeah, it was 762 original miles, not even a thousand. And, um, and then when I got the car, 
because it just been sitting for so long and stuff just wasn't you know being used and stuff wasn't moving like the odometer uh once it was on the road uh the odometer kind of just stopped it stopped at 800 and broke and so it hasn't hasn't moved a tick uh since uh like a week or two after me having the car and i've put several thousands of miles since i've had the car and that was uh 7 it'll be 7 years in may but yep that is the original mileage prior to, you know, seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, it just stopped right there. Okay, it is now the next day, because last night just got a little bit too dark, and uh, yeah, I didn't really want to show you the car in the dark, and the uh, fog has rolled in, so that's nice. But anyway, let's just go back to the back of the car. All right, now let's check out back here. So here is the rear end. It is an eight and three quarter, 323 gears. Uh, it's an open diff. 11-inch um, drum brakes. This rear end came out of a 68 Coronet RT that unfortunately burned to the ground. So uh, the guy sold it to me pretty cheap. And uh, he did warn me that the seals might be uh, damaged because of the fire and the heat. And, of course, they are because you can see it leaks. But I knew that. But I needed to get it in the car because the rear end that was in here was my 8 and a quarter. And it was making a bunch of noise, so I needed to get it out of there. And I eventually just gave that rear end to my chump, I mean my buddy Rob, <laughs> who put it in something else. So anyway, and what I'm going to be doing with the rear end essentially is I'm going to be going through it. Uh, I'm going to be working with Eaton, and they're going to send me out a uh, true track unit. And I'm probably going to build like a 355 gear set or a 373 because of the uh, powertrain that I'm going with. It's a... Uh, it's going to be pretty sweet, but I haven't decided that yet. So anyway, let's move on to the back, back of the car. Here are these freaking awesome Dodge decals that I put on there. And I just, I just eyeballed the spaces in between the letters. And then I just had like a ruler out here and marked a line to follow the center line so that it could be somewhat even. And I made sure it was about an inch over my uh, rear marker light here. And you can actually see, uh, I think, some of the pencil marks still there. <laughs> I just haven't erased them. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Gives it a whole new look to that quarter panel. It just looked pretty bare without it. But, um... All right, so here's the back. Uh, this tail panel is actually pretty cool. It was only for the Cornet Deluxe 440 and uh, Super B models. And uh, the 500s and RTs got like that separated taillight uh, situation, which isn't really like my favorite, but um, it doesn't look too bad. So I'll show you the trunk. And this is the only spot in the car that really has uh, bad rust. Um, and it's really even not even that crazy. So um, some, some cancerous spots here and there. Um, you know, you could see there's just like some pinhole stuff happening over there. Um, there is some rust happening up here, and, uh, oop, focus, there we go, nothing really too crazy there. I do want to look into, uh, fixing that hole, I don't really want the, uh, uh, the trunk hinge mount to separate or break off or whatever, but, yeah, so, um, I think for now I'm just going to leave that, it's not really crucial to the hemi swap, but I will fix, ooh, hey, there we go. Not really crucial with a hemi swap, but I will fix it. And then uh, there is some rust uh, happening right here on the uh, bottom of the, of the quarter. So I'll uh, at some point I'll need to make a patch panel and uh, cut all that out and uh, re weld in a uh, patch panel there. So here is the other door. And when I got it, th this door was probably like a half an inch down, and they were just slamming it onto the bottom of the of the rocker panel here. And it's freaking irritating, man, because they, they did damage this like a little bit. But I was able to move the door up as kind of close to where it needs to go. Still needs to be adjusted a little bit more. But, yeah, you can see that paint is just... You know, it's not close. And I did buy paint. I did have this color paint matched. So at some point during the build, I will paint match this door just to get rid of this uh, ugly off-white color. But yeah, check out this fender. It's just, you know, it had been mangled. And they just grabbed, look, what it looks to me like they just grabbed like vice grips or pliers or something and just try to bend it back. It just looks like ass, but 
nothing really I'm gonna fix right now. And then I did notice that it looks like the car had been like curved at some point or something happened there and you know ripped up that metal which is a little bit irritating and then we have uh this scratch and i'm not sure what this is from they might have drove into something or something i don't know but kind of sucks but so yeah that's the car right now as it sits you know it's it's nothing nothing special but it is it is special to me so um i'm gonna show you now oh the hood I need to show you guys the hood I got. So obviously, as you can see back there, there's my original steel hood, which weighs a bajillion and four quarter pounds. And I actually hit a deer in this car doing like 45 miles an hour. And this is the only thing that happened to it. It just chipped the paint off. <laughs> Super lucky it didn't damage anything else. But um, so I bought this hood and it was already, you know, set up like a six pack. So let me just move my freedom f cover over here. All right, so yeah, I got this from I got this hood from a company in Canada. I uh, can't remember the name of the company, but they did an okay job. It was really rough when I got it. So a friend of mine and I uh, sanded the crap out of this whole hood and then repainted it. But um, uh, and then another friend of mine, uh, Rob, came over and we put in the uh, the four post mounts, and it is a legit four point hood like it's completely lift off hinge delete um i got the hinges sitting over there but they did have the provisions in the hood uh if you did want to mount it with um with the hinges and, and like a lighter spring but pff, that's weak <laughs> i'd rather just take the hood off and set it on the roof anyway because race car all right so now that you've seen how the car is right now i'll show you and talk to you about uh how i got the car when and what it looked like before it was pretty bad so here we go so in 2013 uh right after i got out of the marines i got a job as a tow truck driver in grass valley and um i would say maybe like a year or so into the job um i got a call to do a tow on uh, this guy's honda or whatever so i get there i'm hooking the car up and he's telling me like where he lives and so anyway we head out there and he lives out like in, in the middle of nowhere um in nevada city california uh, with his grandparents so we get to the house um i'm trying to look to see where i need to back in and drop the car off so anyway you know i get my pto on i'm i lower the bed I'm, i get out and i'm starting to work the controls to get the car off the bed and as i'm just sitting there i'm just like do 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 you know looking over and all of a sudden boom there it was just like this sitting there <laughs> uncovered completely filthy covered in moss and mold um freaking no driver's side window plastic bag and duct tape everywhere over like every part of the window and like i immediately fell in love and i was freaking asking him like hey is it for sale and they were saying no it's my grandpa's he's gonna get to it one day you know that sort of thing so i'm taking a look at the car i'm like checking out the front end you know, it doesn't look that bad. The whole car looks super straight. Um, and then his grandpa came out and we were talking for a minute and I asked him if I could, you know, pop the hood and take a look. And, you know, so he was like, yeah, go ahead. So anyway, I popped the hood and uh, it looks like a very, very complete, you know, 318, pretty much unmolested, you know, original um, two barrel like intake and carb sitting on there and so I'm looking at that and I look at the side of the car and I see that there's a primer gray door and they said, yeah, the original door is in the trunk and it's pretty, it's pretty beat up. The whole door was ripped forward at some point from the previous owners that we got it from. So, um, I had to deal with that, but wasn't a big deal. And then, yeah, you can just see the, like the car is just covered in mold, moss, like it just, it was pretty gross. So, um, uh, moving on to the side of the car, here is like <laughs> the rear wheels, sitting in the dirt in the mud for who knows how long i think it's been sitting there for 15 plus years and um you know the back of the car same situation dude like it's just covered in mold all all over the whole car and um you'll be able to see that the exhaust tips were basically almost touching the ground and my car is not exactly 
you know, low to the ground essentially. <laughs> so um, it just shows you how long it just sat in one spot for. But yeah, um, it's completely sad. It just sat right there uncovered underneath pine trees and, you know, just being totally neglected, which is really sad. But um, so anyway, I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, do you, do you mind if I open up the driver's side door and take a look in there? And he was like, yeah, go for it, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I opened up the door and, you know, someone had like put a speaker in there. The, the dude's grandson was kind of a druggy looking dirtbag kind of a guy. So I think he shoved those speakers in there or whatever. I don't even know. But yeah, so the inside, same story. It was like uh, moldy. Uh, spider webs everywhere, freaking dirt and pine needles. Uh, I believe that there was like water sitting sitting behind uh, the driver's seat on the on the floorboard there, and uh, I immediately just thought like, man, that water needs to get out of there, otherwise it's just gonna rot the floor. But um, yeah, like the headliner, you get you see all that like white speckled stuff is um, is mold. So that was gross, and <laughs> so I was like, well, that's got to be taken care of. So anyway, me and Grandpa were, uh, were talking, and I was saying like, hey, you know, I'd, 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 I'm, I'd like to buy the car from you. And he was like, well, it's not for sale. And, uh, you know, I, I had someone offer me like $4,000 for it, you know, a couple of years ago, but I turned him down. And so like right when he told me that, I was like, okay, well, he might have been interested if maybe someone brought him cash. So I thought if I brought him $4,000 in cash, maybe he'd be interested in selling it. But I stupidly made the mistake of telling him um, that I had a 70 Dodge Dart. I'd be willing to trade him plus some cash for the car. And he was like, no, I don't want a Dart. So anyway, we finished our conversation. It pretty much looked like he wasn't going to sell it to me. So um, I made it a point to like go back and talk to him every chance that I got, like either on the weekend or after work or something like that. And he was still very, I don't feel like selling it, you know, that kind of a thing. But, um, but yeah, at the time I had a 2005 Infiniti G35 that I bought when I came back from deployment in 2011. And I ended up just selling that car on a whim that he would sell the coronet to me and <laughs> luckily it paid off because he did sell it to me. I brought him $4,200 in cash. He got very interested <laughs> and he, but he still turned me down after the, after I brought him 4,200 in cash. And it wasn't until like a couple days later, he said, tell you what, um, you bring me that dart and $3,500 and the car, and the car is yours. So I was like, done. You know, the dart is primer gray, uh, bench seat, slant six car. It was nothing fancy. It was just, um, it was just a basic little daily driver I had in high school and it was my first car and I was kind of, I was kind of bummed to give it up because now it's just rotting away at their house. But anyway, so the deal went down. I brought him the dart. I brought him the, um, the cash. I got my tow truck and, uh, boom, I freaking hooked it up and then I towed the whole chingus back to my friend Matt's house. And here is me with the car after I uh, towed it to my friend Matt's house. <laughs> Just stoked out of my mind. Couldn't believe that I actually acquired my dream car. And so like the next couple days after that, um, I was just walking around the car, just looking at it. And then I scrubbed it and cleaned it. And um, man, it was just super, super fun. And uh, it freaking stunk to try to get all that moss and mold off the car or whatever. But um, so this next video you're going to see is a clip of the car idling and running for the first time in who knows how long, maybe 15 plus years. And uh, <laughs> man, I was just, I was excited to get it going. And it had some really cool glass packs underneath, but they eventually just rotted through and broke. But yeah, check it out.
So back when I first got this car, I I regret not taking enough pictures or especially videos. I, I, I hardly have any footage of this thing um, like from when I first got it. There was like a couple little small videos here and there, but I don't know where they went. I lost them. I, I, I wasn't on Instagram at that time. YouTube wasn't even like remotely like in my thought process. So unfortunately, I don't have like a ton of pictures or videos from back when I first got it, um, which sucks, but nothing I can do with it now. Um, but so hopefully you guys like that video. Um, just, you know, kind of giving like the brief history on this thing and, uh, the progress that it's, uh, that's going to be made on it and stuff like that. I, Oh, that's uh, one thing. Um, so I do have my Borgeson steering box and I'm waiting on my steering column to come back from, I did it steering. And then, um, I've been talking with the guys at uh, QA1, and hopefully we can get a suspension set up um, for this car here in the next like few months or something like that. I know they said they were kind of backordered on a few things, but um, so waiting on QA1, um, some things from Holly that I still need to get or whatever. So there's going to be more content coming out as far as the actual hemi swap process goes, and uh, like I said, as soon as I get suspension. Um, that's really like one of the main key things. As soon as I get suspension in an oil pan, I can actually get this engine in the car and, uh, start doing everything I need to get it back on the road before August. So, but anyway, guys, uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, I really appreciate it. Subscribe. If you feel that I have earned your subscription, give the video a thumbs up, like it, share it. Um, what's the other little YouTube thing? Oh, turn on the bell or whatever. But anyway, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, dudes, we'll see you later.